here's your clicker question. I'm going to draw you a picture of four different fields, and I want you to tell me which of the patterns represent a possible electrostatic field. Any one of them, two of them, three of them, or all four of them may, but you need to tell me which one represents a possible field due to charges. So let's just do four different fields. The four, the, the four fields have nothing to do with each other. Um, they're independent. Uh, let me draw... Okay, I've drawn you the four fields. They're a little messy, but hopefully you can see these are four sets of potential field lines. And the question is, is which one of these, or two of these, or three of these, or four of these, show field lines that could be possible due to charges that are outside of the region shown? So there are no charges in the squares shown, but they are, these are fields that are potentially drawn for charges outside of the region shown. Which ones of these are possible? I'll give you a couple seconds to think about that. Everybody has to vote. Everybody has to vote. The correct answer is, drum roll please. Do, 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 do. All right, whatever. Um, B. The electric fields must start on plus charges and finish on minus charges. Um, and, is, and assuming that there are no charges in the picture shown, each of A, D, and C have field lines that both start and terminate within the box. So um, these field lines don't even start and terminate on anything. They start and terminate on themselves. So, so a charge outside the box couldn't create these. So the field lines in D don't start or terminate um, on anything except themselves. The field lines in C seem to come from nowhere. They start on these points that I've just drawn, but there are no charges in the picture, so that can't be correct. And the field lines in A terminate right here in the center and start right here in the center, but I said there were no charges in the box. So the only possible field is B, I'm not entirely sure how we'd make that field, but we can imagine some charge distribution where there's some positive charges on this side outside the box and negative charges on this side that are making these kinds of field lines. So B is the correct answer. Okay, one more clicker question. So I'm gonna give you a dipole and put it in a field and then ask, which of these fields exerts a net force? A dipole, it's the purple box, it's got a minus and a plus charge in it, right? So that's just an atom that has some kind of separation of the minus and plus charge. It's a dipole, a minus and plus charge. And I put it in a field. A and B, the field um, varies as you go across the page. Uh, C and D, I, I guess I, I might have just given something away. Um, in C and D, uh, we've got a different kind of field, but the field is in green. Um, and the dipole in B and D is at an angle, and the dipole in A and C is uh, lined up along that central field line. Uh, the question is, is in which one of these situations, A, B, C, or D, is the net force on the dipole equal to zero? It could be more than one. Okay, rather than me giving you, um, rather than me putting in two minutes of silence here, let me just ask you to pause it, come up with your answer, and then restart the video. Okay, I'm going to give you the answer now, so if you don't have it yet, make sure you pause it and think about it. But here's the answer. The, well, I'm not even going to give you the answer, I'm going to start to just talk it through. So, the plus charge, remember that the direction of the electric field is the direction of the force on a plus charge. So this plus charge is going to feel a force in that direction. This minus charge, the electric field line is opposite the direction of minus charge would feel a force. So this minus charge feels, whoops, something happened. I'm not sure what. So this minus charge feels a force in that direction. Are these two forces the same? If they're the same, then the net force is zero, but they're not the same because these field lines are spread out more here than they are here, and so that the force on the minus charge must be bigger than the force on the plus charge. There, so there is a net force to the left on this dipole. Again, because the field lines spread out more to the right, 
the field is smaller to the right, so the field exerts a smaller force on a charge to the right. And remember, in a dipole, the charges are the, the minus charge and the plus charge have the same magnitude. One is just minus and one is plus. So the plus charge, in this case, in part A, is going to feel a smaller force than the minus charge, and so there's going to be a net force to the left. So by that same argument, that even though this one in B, this one's at an angle, the plus charge is further to right than the left, so the plus charge is going to feel a smaller force, the minus charge is going to be feel a bigger force, so there's still going to be a net force to the left. Notice that the other thing about B is that because it's at an angle, it also feels a torque, so it also rotates, but we didn't ask about that. Okay, so now let's look at C. So this is some, a picture that we haven't seen before. But this is a valid field in C. The field, the, notice that the field lines don't get any farther apart on the right than they do on the left. So what does that mean about the field or the force? That means that the field is constant, that the force doesn't get any smaller as we get farther away. And that's perfectly fine. We just haven't seen that situation before. And so that means that the force at the plus charge, the force which points to the right, is equal to the force at the minus charge to the left, those two forces are equal because the field is equal at, those, at, at the minus charge and at the plus charge. So the net force in this case is equal to zero. Okay, so now probably you can answer for yourself. What about Part D, well, in Part D, well, maybe maybe not. Maybe it's not obvious. In Part D, again, look at the field near the plus charge and the field near the minus charge. The field lines are still separated by the same distance, so the force is actually the same, right? So we've got a force there and a force there. Those two forces are the same. So what's the net force? The net force is zero. So the answer is C and D. Both feel a net force, but you might say, but there's something different about C and D, right? In D, just like in B, because those two forces are not along the same line, there is a torque and the whole thing is going to rotate. Now, we didn't ask about torque, so that's not important here, but there is a torque that will rotate that dipole until it is um, in the position of C, right, where there's no net torque. Okay. Okay, I think that's probably enough for today.